Hello, this is Richard Silverstein of the Tikkun Olam blog uh, speaking to you for Israel Social TV. On July 6th, Israel attacked one of Bashar al-Assad's main weapons supply depots outside Latakia. The target were uh, Russian-made Yachans anti-ship missiles that could be used by Hezbollah to attack Israeli Navy ships during the next Lebanon war, and I assure you, there will be one. Though at first the Syrian rebels took credit for the attack, I knew this wasn't so because a confidential Israeli source told me not only that Israel was responsible, but that it had coordinated the attack with the Free Syrian Army, which had mounted a local diversionary operation against government forces to distract them. The story was largely ignored by the world media. I even tried to pitch it to the BBC and others unsuccessfully. So if you re read my blog or read my blog, you had exclusive information no mainstream media outlet would publish for five days. The mainstream media has finally decided that Israel did attack Latakia, five days, as I said, after I first did. My post was written on July 7th, one day after the attack. Yesterday, July 13th, CNN was the first mainstream media outlet to report, based on anonymous Pentagon sources, that Israel was, at, was responsible. The reporter who wrote that piece never credited the original publication that reported it, Tikkun Olam. Amos Harel wrote a story for Haaretz in which he claimed the Lataki attack, quote, has largely flown under the radar, unquote which is nonsense because it discounts my own reporting, which he didn't credit. The New York Times also essentially regurgitated the CNN report and didn't bother to note my work either. You have to ask yourself whether the mainstream media journalists are doing their jobs. Why does it require a gold-plated press pass to be taken seriously? Finally, this should be a lesson to anyone seriously interested in following world events that the mainstream media offer half the story, if that. You need to cultivate alternate sources of information like social TV and blogs. And if you're in the mainstream media, you can't do your job as you should if you ignore, belittle, or disrespect us, as most of you invariably do. Israel is reportedly angry with the U.S. for spilling the beans on Israel's role in the bombing, which does seem a bit chutzpahdik, Israel decided to invade Syria's sovereignty to obliterate defensive weapons and doesn't want to pay the price. Alex Fishman, a reporter whose work I generally greatly respect, has the gall in today's Yediot to take the U.S. to task, claiming it's a, quote, untrustworthy ally, unquote, because Pentagon officials supposedly sold Israeli military secrets cheaply to the, Israeli, to the U.S. media. In doing so, we supposedly knew full well that we were endangering Israel's regional interests and the lives of Israelis. Excuse me, fella, but you've got it backwards. Israel chose to endanger the lives of its own citizens when it attacked the depot. The fault is not with the Pentagon, leaker, but with Israeli policy. Israel believes that it can get away with whatever it likes in the Middle East, and that its enemies like Assad are so afraid that if only it doesn't rub the insult in, that he'll look the other way and, and ignore a flagrant violation of his sovereignty. Thus, Americans are nasty spoil sports to violate that rule of secrecy. Another factor Fishman discounts is, is that this story, first reported by me, derived from an Israeli source, not an American one, which means there are Israelis who believe the public should know these facts. So, Mr. Fishman, don't point the finger at us. Look in the mirror yourself. My reporting of the story proves that such secrecy and opacity, the hallmark of Israel's national security state, is outmoded and ineffective. Finally, the American comedian Rodney Dangerfield had it right. You just can't get any respect unless you're one of the select establishment few. But beating them all to the story does have its satisfactions. This is Richard Silverstein for Israel Social TV and Tikkun Olam. Thanks for listening.